Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we will show you how to install HR7 Soup's integration host from the Azure Marketplace. We'll also show you how to securely connect a remote client dashboard for controlling your workflows as well as a simple and secure HL7 communications channel configured with mutual client certificate authentication. This is all incredibly easy to do so let's dive straight into the Azure portal and begin for configuration. We'll start by navigating to the marketplace and do a quick search for the HL7 Soup application and find HL7 Soup integration host. I'll click on that and then take the default option and click create. We select the subscription we wish to run it in and then I'll create a new resource group with a unique name for hosting the app service. I then head across to the application settings and give it a new web app name, again keeping it unique. I then click next again and we provide our name and email address as well as our phone number and click create. This is now going to go and deploy the integration host app service ready for us to use. Great, we've now deployed, so let's head across to the resource group and take a look. And here we see we've created our integration host service and also the plan that it runs in. I'm just going to click into the app service and we'll take a closer look. And here we are, we can see everything's up and running now. With luck, you would have also received an email from HL7Soup with your license key and instructions how to continue. But sometimes that can take a little while, so just in case, you can click on the URL here and view the website. You'll be prompted for a certificate, of which you can just click cancel, and it gives you a link to download the integration host client to connect to the server. I've already downloaded it to a VM, so I'm just going to run that now and show you the steps. Double click to install, and I'm just going to take all the default settings, and click finish. And you'll see here we've been prompted to enter in our license number. This would have come to you in the email that was sent through when you signed up in the Azure Marketplace, but as this can sometimes be delayed, I'm just going to quickly show you if you head over to the HR7 Soup website, click on downloads, and then click for sign up for the 33 day trial. And if you fill out this form, you'll be sent your license number without delay. It's not held up by the Azure environment. So anyway, now back in the HR7 Soup integration host client, I'm just going to paste in my license number, and we'll see it license. Okay, so that's licensed my local version, and I'm now connected to my local version of integration host. We now need to redirect this to the server's location. So where is that? Well, if we head back to the Azure portal, well, we can see the URL of our app service just here, so I'll click to copy it, then head back to the client, and now we need to redirect the client to point to that server. I click on the menu system here, select the server, and paste in my server URL. I now click test connection, and it's going to prompt me for a client certificate. Now you see I have none available at the moment, I haven't installed any on this computer. If I did have one that I wanted to use installed in the computer certificates, I could choose that, but instead I'm just going to click and generate a new certificate, and I'll just take the default name, and now it's created and installed this client certificate for me to use. I'm just going to point out that whatever certificate you select at this moment will be set as this server's required certificate meaning any other system that wants to connect as an administrator will need to have this certificate installed on that computer as well. I'll select it and click OK. OK, we've successfully tested the connection. So if I now click OK, we've connected through to the server. Just to make my life a bit easier, I'm going to rename here. So I'm going to call this my Azure App Service. There's lots of different things that we can do inside of Integration Host, many different ways of sending and receiving data. I'm just going to set up a simple HTTPS endpoint that's going to accept HL7 messages. So I'm going to click New, and then change the incoming message to be an HTTP receiver, and I'm going to give it a service name. Whatever I call the service name, that becomes part of the URL. We can have quite complicated URLs. Uh, HL7 soup's fine for me, and I'm just going to copy this URL. I'm going to keep that for later. We're going to click Require Client Certificate to make sure it's secure. But I should add, in order for you to not require a client certificate, there's actually a config setting change that you need to make. And this is to make sure that by default, all connections are secure. But in case you're wondering, you can head over to the Configuration tab here. 
and under the application settings tab you'll find there's a client certificate not required value if we edit that value and save it as true we we'll then be able to send messages that don't require a client certificate it could be that you handle your security using other mechanisms but anyway as i said we'd prefer to pref that you actually had a certificate so i'm just going to require that same certificate that i created earlier Again, I could create another certificate to do that if I wanted, particularly if I wanted a third party to be able to access it, I can generate that certificate. But I'm going to select the same certificate and click OK. Now it's put in the thumbprint. I'm just going to say that I'm going to receive an HL7 message, and I'm just going to put in a quick sample HL7 message to give an idea of what's coming in. And that's going to help with our bindings for whatever we need them for. We don't actually have a second step for this workflow. We could add as many steps as we like, sending it off to other systems, writing it to the file system, writing the data to a database, or sending it on to another web service, perhaps in another format that's not HL7. But for now, we'll just receive that message and just have it written out. And remember, we've copied this address ready for the sender. I'm going to hit save and close. And that's deployed our workflow to the server. And so now let's test that we can receive this into the cloud. So to do that, I'm just going to use the HR7 Soup editor to simulate an external system. And we've got all these test HR7 messages to send through. So let's set that up to send. I click Create Sender. And then I just select the activity type to be an HTTP sender. And I paste in our URL. Yeah, I can now test this and it will fail. And that's because we haven't passed in the certificate that we need. So I'm going to click OK, show more connections, select client authentication certificate, and then we just need to pass in the thumbprint of our certificate. And I'm going to do that by clicking the dialog and once again selecting the certificate we configured as the inbound certificate. And now if I test it, we'll receive a success. I say OK, and I'll save and close the screen. Now I'll send through a test message, and we can see we've got a response back. And if we bring up integration host here, it showed the message come through. And if I refresh the logs, we'll see that it's brought through that message to the server. I'll shift that to the side and hit play here to send all those messages through. And we'll see them going in one at a time. The messages are through, refresh the logs, and we can see that they all come through correctly. Now we've got this in the cloud, we can also add as many workflows as we like to this. You're not going to be limited to just one with the service. If you've got any other questions, please contact info at hl7soup.com. As always, if this video has helped you, please consider clicking the like button, subscribe to our channel. We've got more videos coming out all the time.